Hey, what's up? It's a figure hunter. Up for full review today is the new optical heart rate analysis testing for the Garmin Elevate 4.0. It's just recently released on the Garmin Venue 2, so we're going to do an in-depth analysis across a series of CrossFit workouts. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing for more. Everything on the Fit Gear Hunter channel as well as the FitGearHunter.com website is for the purpose of testing and tracking devices for CrossFit or high-intensity interval training versus all the running biking and swimming videos that are out there on the market. So we're gonna do an in-depth test across CrossFit workouts when just wearing this on the wrist. And we're gonna compare it to the current big time leader, the Apple Watch 6, which has had the best results for optical heart rate accuracy. And then last, we're gonna look at how the Elevate 4.0 on the Garmin Venue 2 compares to all the other optical heart rate or uh, heart rate check, you know, heart rate tracking devices on the bicep. So we're going to look at all of them across the board in one full spectrum across the same type of things. So obviously the most important thing I would say is that when you're doing a workout, it is always best if you're doing a CrossFit or high intensity interval workout to wear a chest strap or at the very least an armband. We'll see the accuracy of the Polar Verity Sense armband that tracks the optical heart rate from the bicep. So we'll see what the options look like there, but it is always just simple and best to be able to track it. But we've often wished we could have an optical heart rate that would track it on the wrist. And I am super excited to share some of the results today because it is finally starting to happen. Finally starting to happen. So how do we track things? How do we test things for CrossFit workouts? Now, obviously with CrossFit workouts, you have this peak of intensity. So you have a peak of intensity. Your heart rate is in these high, high zones, or you're peaking the intensity, dropping it down, peaking the intensity, dropping it down. And so the heart rate tracking has to be able to keep up with both knowing it can keep up with the high heart rates in the 170s, 180s, 160s, even the 150s. It can just keep it can go that high and track it, but also that it can fluctuate with the fluctuating heart rate. That's a lot of what high intensity interval training accomplishes as well. So the optical heart rate sensor when worn on the wrist has to, can it keep up? Is there one? And we found with the Apple Watch 6 that in fact, the Apple Watch 6 did a pretty good job. So what are we looking at when we're testing and tracking the details to be able to evaluate the accuracy? So we're looking at three major components average heart rate. So does it just pick up the average heart rate? Now that's not as hard to accomplish. Is it just sort of getting the average heart rate? So we're giving a lower percentage of the overall accuracy testing to that. The zone four and five. So is it capturing the amount of time spent in your 80 to 100% of max heart rate? So can it keep up with both the times when the peak is coming up over that 80 to 100 or just staying up over the 80 to 100? Is it tracking the most significant or most high level exertion. And then in the highest level in the zone five, is it capturing the 90 to hundred percent of maximum heart rate to be able to to be able to say, here is how hard you push your body. Now, the Garmin Venue 2 is unfortunately doesn't have workout analytics. So we're going to see in a comparison against the Garmin Phoenix 6 um, to how the workout analytics are missing from the Garmin Venue platform. So we're not going to be able to see how it calculates your training impact, your aerobic and anaerobic training effect, as well as the load over time, as well as all those, you know, helpful pieces for training, but we can at least see as much time is spent in these higher heart rate zones. And it was the same testing that was done with the Apple Watch 6. And I'll show you the results for the Apple Watch 6 as well. So we're going to look <clears throat> quickly at a few basic things. We're going to look at how the optical heart rate uh, sensor itself looks, the new Elevate 4.0 versus the Elevate 3.0 that's on all the current devices now. We're going to look at how the workouts sort of look on the venue compared to a more full depth in-depth workout analysis on the Phoenix 6, but also just how it looks. And then we're going to look at an important factor. We're going to try to bounce through those things quickly. We're going to look at an important factor of how do the heart rate graphs look over time. So is it tracking the flow of the workout? Is it look like a mirror image of the chest strap? So we're comparing everything to the H10, the Polar H10 chest strap, which is I've found to be one of the best, compared to the actual optical heart rate sensor. Is it tracking the flow? And then we're going to look at the details. We're going to look at the averages, the detail, the sort of the analytical review to get a percentage score of accuracy. And we're going to compare it to the Apple Watch accuracy on the tail end. And then we're going to look at the accuracy of that same test, those same metrics, average heart rate, zone four and five, zone five, 
across a bunch of work workouts or across a bunch of watches with the optical heart rate sensor being the primary tracking metric and the accuracy when doing CrossFit or high intensity interval for all the other watches out there. So with that, let's dive in. Let's look at what it looks like on the device itself and then get into the rest of the details. All right, so here it is. That's the difference. You can see the primary difference is these diodes, if I can get them to fire on camera, are basically two center. Now it doesn't blink here and you have the pulse ox around the edges compared to the current diodes on the Elevate 3.0 on this Garmin Phoenix 6 that has two green and then two uh, pulse ox tracking red at night. So there it is firing there. So two green and then versus the differences here on the new Elevate 4.0 that has two green in the middle. And something about the technology is getting better. Let's okay, so on. the device is definitely changing. The actual diodes are different. So let's look at the first just to see a basic summary comparison of workout to workout. All right, so what do we see in just a variety of workouts? This is how the workout looks just off the venue. Now, this is more specific to the venue than it is to the optical heart rate sensor. But you can see the flow of the workout. You can see the average heart rate in the top left and the time zones versus the venue system. Now, the venue system gives you a bunch more statistics. Um, you know, again, you have to scroll down to the bottom to get different parts because there's so many statistics that are added. And this is the venue two and then the Phoenix six. Um, so the Phoenix six to give, giving you training effect on the aerobic and the anaerobic side. So that's important to note that the venue does not include those things, but you can see a couple of very hard workouts and how it kept up and how it tracked. So this was a hard workout, like a partner wad on a Saturday. And then um, you can see it, how the statistics, obviously this was a high level training effect. It was 5.0, the maxed out on the scale. And you can see I spent in on the venue two, 34 minutes in the red, just as it sort of shows here and reflects the impact to my body. This here was a half Murph, just prepping for the Memorial Day Murph. And this, you can see that it kept up the high level heart rate, you know, 26 minutes in the red zone versus the same on the chest strap. So that's the basic thing you can see in each of these is just how it flows, what the information looks like, but you can see the heart rate sensor is actually starting to pick up very well. So okay, and now for the most important part, to be able to see the trend lines. This is important to be able to see is the optical heart rate. So we can track the metrics in those higher level zones, but does the workout flow follow the same flow? Are you really capturing the essence of what you put your body through? To be able to you know, see the impact of the workout on your body, the most important essential thing is to track how does it capture the flow of what ex actually happened in the workout when compared to a chest strap. So let's look at a number of them sort of side by side to see how it looks on the optical heart rate Elevate 4.0 versus the the chest strap. Okay, so this is the most important part. So every each of these workouts, you're going to see the heart rate. Now, this was just a short workout where I just tested the AMRAP capabilities of the watch versus the chest strap. So it actually doesn't look that fantastic. But the other workouts, you can see the flow of the entire workout from the lifting portion to the Metcon at the end versus the chest strap. So it's not as smooth, but it's picking up all the peaks, it's picking up all the flow and the trend lines. So this was a intense you know partner wide that was that high score and you can see it looks very much the same just with a little bit more of a blurry line feel this was the half murph where i just sort of warmed up and then did a half of a murph you can see the flow there versus the flow there so it still has a lot of the same peaks so all of these are looking incredibly accurate when it comes to tracking the flow of the workout did you pick up the lifting portion versus the metcon at the end versus the chest strap Again, lifting portion versus the Metcon at the end versus the chest strap. So you can see the curves. Now it's not tracking it perfectly all the time, um, but the biggest thing is that if you're tracking the trend lines of where your heart rate is peaking, and on average it's picking up the amount of time in the different levels of intensity or the intensity zones of your heart rate plus the average heart rate, then the score is worthwhile. It's useful information because um, it is really tracking the accuracy. So you can see the peaks of the, the more heavy lifting, or the, actually it was just a more of a lifting session, a longer lifting session versus the Metcon. You can see the peaks here versus the flow of the chest strap picking up same same trend line. So, okay, we'll look at that and we go, okay, well, it looks like it's got a lot of shoddy movements to it, but is it tracking the amount of time in the peak zones? Because that's, again, what's going to determine when they release future watches, that's what's going to determine the training effect on your body. So we want to make sure that that is accurate. So let's come back together. Okay, so now let's look at the results. This is the hard line results for the percentage of accuracy. I want to make a point that you'll see that the optical heart rate tracking on the venue 
on the Elevate 4.0 is tracking high. So we didn't just keep, so if, if, if in some parts of the statistics, it was tracking 97% accurate. In some parts, it was overshooting, it was tracking the heart rate high at 103. Well, we don't actually keep the 103 and the 97 to do an average together because that's inaccurate. 103 average, means that it's 3% off and it's still only 97% accurate. So you'll see a first set of scores so we can see the actual results and if it's tracking more often over, more often under. And then I'm gonna reverse the overages to just say, well, if it's 103% of the heart rate tracked in the zone five on the op elevo, you know, optical versus the chest strap, we're gonna change that to 97% to get a true accuracy because it was still 3% off, although it was to the positive. We don't want the positives and the negatives to blend out and make it look like it's more accurate. So let's look at the results. And boom, look at that. I mean, all greens except for one anomaly, and I don't know what happened. Actually, my heart rate was fluctuating right above and below the changeover from zone four and five. And so something with the watch was not picking up because in that last red one, 65% accurate, you can see in the zone four and five, the total time in peak zones was 101% accurate. So it was very accurate. Um, it's just something in where I, my heart rate was fluctuating between the zone four and zone five messed up. So if we took that out, these stats would get even better. But if you look at the whole, a lot of the stats are right in the high 90s or just above 100. But you see the trend, obviously the, the Elevate 4.0 is picking up above average. So it's picking up more heart rate. So we need to reverse those out and bring it back to more true accuracy. So if you have 101% of the average heart rate, it's really 99% accurate because it was 1% off. And so that's what these numbers are. So again, looking at it, you just see lots of high 90s. There are a couple of outliers and I didn't copy over the actual stats for the average zone five and zone four because I I'm actually was just reversing the percentage calculations. But you can see that it was picking up and if you take that an anomaly work out, out, you know, it's gonna get even better. But high 90s and a lot of these, that is fantastic. So we look at the average on the average heart rate 96, zone 5, 90. And if you take out that one bad workout, it gets even better to like 92%. And then zone 4 and 5, 95, almost 96% accurate. So drum roll, please. What is the final accuracy across eight CrossFit workouts? 93.4% accurate. 93.4% accurate. That is better than we have seen in the past. Let's talk about it for a second. And there you have it. If we take out that last workout, it goes to like 94 point something on the accuracy. But even with one one anomaly, one thing that we just probably could just sort of wipe out that one workout because something happened. Because if you saw the graph in the last graph we looked at, it looked like it flowed the actual, the same flow. So it was picking up the trend of the workout. It was just something on that sort of conversion of zone four to zone five. So we took out that, it would be around 94% accurate. So we are looking at some of the best numbers we have seen, and it is consistent. There was a lot of those workouts where it was just like straight on, right on the money. And it is, I mean, that's, that's awesome. I still am going to wear a chest strap because I think that's how you get accuracy. You don't have some sort of glitch that occurs with your wrist and a lot of wrist flex and you're wearing hand wraps. You can wear a chest strap, put the watch off to the side. But this is incredible. 93% accurate, even with the one bad workout. Now, what does it compare to the current leader, Apple Watch 6? Let's look at the results side by side to see who the winner is. Okay, so what do we see on the optical, optical heart rate tracking for the Apple Watch 6? You see a lot of same things. So you see high level accuracy with a couple of outliers. So I didn't change the right color scheme, but I just, I levelized this and made sure that it was the same calculation metrics as was used in the Garmin Elevate 4.0 testing. So all these numbers are gonna be the same. So if you look at that stats, I mean, it's across six workouts versus eight, fine. Um, there's a couple of outliers. There's a couple of lower 90s, but a lot of really high scores if you compare it to, you know, the Garmin Elevate 4.0. So a lot of the stats are looking just as good or similarly good. It's just that Garmin, it looks is statistically or just more often looking better. So Garmin's Elevate 4.093. So now we're looking at the Apple Watch. Drummoll, what is the final calculation for the Apple Watch 6 when you're comparing it across the exact same analysis process? 93%. Technically it was 92.96 and we'll see that in a second. So 93% on the Apple Watch 6 versus 93.4%. So folks, we have a new winner. The, the Garmin Elevate 4.0 is it. And boom, 
there you have it. Apple Watch 6, no longer the current leader. And like I said, if we dropped off that one bad workout where it missed the Zone 5 on the Garmin Elevate 4.0, we would have a you know considerably better score versus the Apple Watch 6. But even with that included, it still is picking up better accuracy across a number of workouts and doing CrossFit or high-intensity interval training than the Apple Watch 6. Now, Obviously, this brings the question is, how is everybody else doing? How is everybody statistically holding up? Let's look at how all the other you know, devices are tracking as far as accuracy when looking at the same type of tracking metrics and tracking analysis. Let's dive in. Okay, so this is just the Apple Watch score. So let's look at how all the watches have done in all the testing of a similar type. So what do we see? The Verity Sense armband optical but it's on the arm, 99.3. That is fantastic. That's a great solution when pairing to a watch. Garmin Elevate 4.0 is the current and final leader for the optical heart rate accuracy when doing CrossFit, and it's above the Apple Watch 6. And then look at the Whoop. The Whoop is 80. That, that might seem like, well, oh, gosh, Whoop's good. Well, Whoop, Whoop doesn't even connect to a chest strap, so you're fully dependent on the device. So all these other watches or most of the other watches will connect to a chest strap, so you're not even worried about these low statistics. And like I said in the beginning, you shouldn't be wearing – the optical heart rate tracking, you probably should just actually wear a chest strap or at least the Verity Sense. But you can see the Whoop Elevate 3.0 is was one of the higher ones originally, but it's only 75% accurate. The Vantage M2 i2 72 and down, down the line, you can see Suunto 7, tragically, it doesn't connect to a chest strap at the very bottom. The Huawei GT2, Fossil Gen 5 at the bottom. The Whoop on the wrist. Again, do not wear the Whoop on the wrist if you're doing CrossFit or high-intensity interval training. So that is it. Let's come back together. What do we see? Obviously, there are a lot of optical heart rate sensors on watches today if you're doing CrossFit or high-intensity inter in interval training that are not tracking accurately, are not getting the, 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 the meat of the workouts, so shouldn't be used when tracking. That's why if you look at the WHOOP scores and some of the other scores, if you look at the WHOOP scores specifically, it's sort of a, like a write-off because you can't connect that to a chest strap. All these other watches, like all the Polar Series watches, you can connect to a chest strap and have absolute certainty and accuracy. So that, you know, the Suunto 7 can't connect to a chest strap. So unfortunately, that's what you're left with is those lower scores or even at the best when connecting a bicep band for the whoop. That looks like a high score, but all these others can connect to a chest strap and you're getting 100% accuracy in relative terms. So if it's great at 80%, that's still, you're limited to only that device tracking. So that is it. That is the Garmin Elevate 4.0 tracking when it comes to the, you know, on the Venue 2 right now, and we're dying for the release of a 955 or a 255 or anything else that has this new hardware that also has workout analytics. That's the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.